This is the second in a three-part video on how to create a line etching on a copper plate. In the first video, we learned how to bevel the edge from a 90 degree edge to this nice beveled edge so that the plate can travel nicely through the press. That was a short video. In this video, we are going to learn how to degrease the plate and then cover the surface of the copper with a hard ground. This is an acid resistant ground, which we're going to draw through and then we'll etch through the lines that we draw into the plate in preparation for proofing. This is a finished etched plate. It's got the design etched into the plate and this is where we're going to get for the rest of this video. Let's get started. First, switch on the hot plate and increase the temperature to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn off the air handler so the hot plate can heat up faster. 30 minutes and counting. In the 30 minutes it takes to heat up the hot plate, you can degrease your copper plate. The quickest method is with wet, dry, extra fine grit sandpaper. Divide a full sheet into four equal strips along the short dimension of the sheet. Feed one strip into a sanding block. Remove the protective film from the face of your copper plate and discard the film. Wet the sanding block and the plate in cold running water. Notice how the water beads up and repels from the greasy surface of the plate? All of that grease residue will prohibit the acid-resistant ground from adhering to the plate. While sanding with 500 grit or higher wet-dry sandpaper is quick, it does have one downside. It imparts a texture to the plate, which will give the print a slightly hazy look. Some artists prefer this look, called a plate tone. Other prefer to have a mirror polish on the plate, making it easier and cleaner to print with no plate tone, but that takes a little bit more work. Once you have completely sanded the plate, you'll notice how the water sheets off the plate. This indicates the lack of oil or grease on the surface of the plate. It is absolutely important to avoid touching the surface of the plate. You don't want to deposit oil from your fingers back onto the surface. Dry the plate quickly between sheets of clean newsprint. If you place the copper plate on the hot plate, the heat from the hot plate will quickly evaporate the remaining water. I'm experimenting with a non-toxic ground called BIG, short for Baldwin Intaglio ground. Traditional hard grounds contain toxic chemicals. Squeeze out a very small amount for this small plate. Charge the brayer with the ground and slowly build up a thin but consistent layer of ground on the plate.
Inspect the ground to make sure no copper is shining through. Add more ground if necessary, but be careful not to overdo it. Place the plate face up on a sheet of newsprint. The newsprint will act as an insulator as you bake the ground onto the hot plate for up to 10 minutes. Remove the plate and let it cure on a cool surface. Once cured, the ground will be dry to the touch. You can use a Sharpie marker to add an acid-resistant barrier to the beveled edges of your plate. Don't forget to turn off the hot plate and turn on the air handler. I always believe it's best to clean up whatever you can by scraping and doing dry cleanup before you use chemistry. Use a razor scraper to scrape the excess big ground up. Wipe the scraper on a phone book page. Roll out the excess ground from the brayer and scrape it up. Wipe off the ink knife and the razor blade. Be careful to avoid cutting yourself. Use Goo Gone or Veggie Oil to clean off the brayer and the ink slab. Hang the brayer. Dry the slab with alcohol. Throw the trash away. It's time to draw through the ground. For this plate, I'm going to draw directly through the ground with the etching needle, skipping the optional step of transferring a drawing guide or design to the surface of the hard ground. The etching needle will easily draw through the hard ground. Don't use pressure heavier than necessary. Pressure sufficient to expose the shiny copper through the ground is heavy enough. Any sort of image will work.
For areas where value is desired, use hatching and cross-hatching to create shapes where more ink will deposit in lines that are close together. Do not clear out entire shapes with your etching needle. There needs to be ground between lines in order for the etching process to work. Attach a masking tape, so-called fishing line, to the back of the plate. I prefer standard yellow masking tape to blue, but in a pinch, blue will do for a small plate. Heavier plates need a stronger tape. Fold the tape over on itself, being careful not to let the tape touch the surface of the plate. Reinforce the tape on the back of the plate with another smaller piece of tape. I've made a few marks I don't want to etch into the plate. I'm going to cover these marks with stop out varnish before etching the plate. The stop out varnish will prohibit the etch from accessing those lines. Before proceeding with the etching process, it's important to protect your eyes and your hands. I'm also wearing an apron in order to protect my clothes. Lower the plate into the vertical etching tank filled with ferric chloride. Make sure the plate is fully submerged, but don't let it go all the way to the bottom of the tank. Use a clothespin to secure the tape to the edge of the tank. Five minutes and counting. Set a timer for five minutes. In the meantime, you can clean out your stop out brush with alcohol. Note, you may wish to use your stop out to preserve lightly etched lines, in which case, don't wash it out at this point. I know that my drawing won't need a progressively deeper etch, so I won't be stopping out anymore. At the end of five minutes, remove the plate to check on the ground. At this point, the lines are very shallow and the ferric chloride drains off quickly. The ground seems to be intact, protecting the surface of the plate as it should. As this is my first time using VIG ground, I'll be checking every 10 minutes to ensure the ground isn't flaking off. This is a cumulative 15 minutes. The ground is holding up. The etch lines drain more slowly since the lines are deeper. After 25 minutes, the ground is still intact, the lines deeper, and the ferret drains even more slowly. Make sure the drips fall back into the tank. This is the end of 35 cumulative minutes, 5, 10, 10, and 10. Looks like the ground is still holding up. Place the plate in a tray and move it to the sink where you can rinse the plate in cold water to get a better look at the bite of the etch into the lines. I think it could handle a lot more time in the bath. I want some pretty deep lines. Fifty five minutes. I'm going to rinse the plate and tape to remove the ferric chloride. Block the plate dry between newsprint. Don't forget to replace the lid on the vertical etching tank to prohibit the etch from evaporating out. Remove the fishing line from the back of the plate. The guy who makes B.I.G., Andrew Baldwin, 
suggests a few ways to remove the ground after etching. His first suggestion is citrus paint stripper, which I don't have. His second suggestion, Brasso, doesn't work well. I do have Goo Gone. It seems to work fine. Continue to find clean spots on the shop rag in order to efficiently clean off the ground. Remove the ground entirely. Use alcohol and a clean shop towel to remove any residual goo gone and dry out the plate. Wipe off your work surface when you're all done. Your design should be physically present on the plate. You should be able to feel it and see it. Your plate is ready for proofing.